you. What up? All right. Um, so, uh, we got the final episode from the Ricky Gervais show. And we've come to the end of the road. Still looking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, y'all know the vibes. But yeah, man. So At least I think this is the last. There might be like another, you know, I don't know. I doubt it. But I think this is the last okay. one. I haven't seen any other one. Episode okay. 13, season three of the Ricky Gervais show, The Year. Okay. That's what we got. The Year. The Year. Okay, okay. I guess that's a nice way to end it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, end of the year. New beginnings. Maybe they got plenty of other stuff, you know, coming after this. How long? When did this end? I, mean, I, know this I think it's like, maybe like 10 now. years ago. 10 years ago? Maybe, maybe longer. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure exactly when. I think yeah. the podcast was like from the early 2000s. Okay. Maybe. So it was the, so the podcast came first. Yeah, the podcast came first. Okay. The podcast came first. You know what I'm saying? And then they really just, I guess they just made the cartoon out of the podcast. (laughs) Out of them talking on the podcast, just conversations on the podcast, they turned it into the cartoon. Brought it to life. Yeah. Yeah, which was dope. Dope. And then, you know, Idiot Abroad. Okay. (laughs) Everything came from that. Okay. Okay. Now, well, yeah, man. Yeah, I've, I've definitely enjoyed this. You know what I'm saying? You definitely got to know Ricky and Steve, you know, a lot more. You yeah, I mean? yeah, I think this, we this, uh, you know, podcast. We know them the most. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. know a lot about uh, Carl. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right, well, let's go, man. You ready? Yes, yes. All right, man. <clears throat> For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. Huh? <laughs> Word here, aren't it? Go on. No, I'm just saying, you know, when you look at it like that over the year. Yeah. Just a lot of stuff has gone on. That's... What's stuck out for you? If you were doing your own review of the year, what would you put on the front cover? Hmm. Uh the the grub. That was that was eating biscuits on the Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just because, you know, it's uh I never thought I'd see that this year. So it was just I, I was there on the computer. Yeah. I was having a cup of tea and a biscuit. Oh. Uh, I put the biscuit on the windowsill. I sort of picked it up. Why um, would you do that? What, why? Why would you put a biscuit on a windowsill? Oh, because I'm sat <laughs> next to the windowsill. It's like something from a cartoon. I put the pie on the windowsill to cool down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so Some ruffian stole it. Yeah. So I was eating that and uh, I was enjoying it. Put the rest of it back down for like the next half of the cup of tea, and. Uh, I saw Planned it. out. This is <laughs> better. Well, we read about this later in the diary. So, and then I saw just like a little crumb moving. I was like, what's going on there? <laughs> yeah. So I looked down closer, and there's an insect that is see through, but with legs. And um, just sort of running off with a crumb into like a little hole. And then when I looked, I noticed there was loads of these little see through things. <laughs> and they were obviously all like, oh, we've got biscuit. And, uh, <laughs> That's exactly what they were saying. They were going, biscuit, biscuits over here. But I can't, that, what, on, what, what was it? Like I say, it was amazing because it was there miles away from what I'm about, and yet. Not that far. They were still like a bit of biscuit, and it was just weird. That that happened, and that's what's that nice. That's what's nice about the na- you know the nature of the world. You know we can invent iPods, we can bring out better vacuum cleaners, um, but at the end of the day, you can't make nature up and see this see-through thing. You do eating a biscuit. Uh, that's that's where I've sort of gone this year. I'd say out of a- anything, I've sort of gone out of my way to to learn more stuff about weird stuff that's happening. I don't know what you've learned. <laughs> you've learned that uh, a creature which you can't even identify that you name, don't know, right? It, 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 you don't know what it is, right? 
um, look like it nicked a bit of crumb. I don't know what knowledge is that. What is that? How is that useful? Just because everything is is changing. But it's not useful. It's not useful to you, and it's not useful to anyone. You can't pass on that as knowledge because we don't know what it was. But Carl or where thinks, it happened but, or why it happened. But Rick, Carl thinks that that the grub has an inkling, has a, has a taste <coughs> form that Vitt is in the same way that Carl does. That's what yeah. he's from makes. He's thinking, as, I can't believe it. They, we, we both love hobnobs. No, as opposed <laughs> to just being yeah. taking the it starch and the flour. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, uh, is that these things have been around for years. Yes. Maybe longer than us. Yes. Right? Now, their life isn't changing in the way that ours have. They still live in a little crack in the wall. Yeah. But they're eating biscuit. <laughs> and that was never meant to happen. The, the squirrels in the park, because people are feeding them Mars bars and everything, uh, they're getting fatter, they're getting bigger, they're getting more violent. <laughs> now, all the time, uh, they're, they're going to cause more yeah. trouble than the other. What happens if you got to get just because when I'm sat in the park and, and what have you, they, they really like cocky. They come up to you now and sort of jump up on the bench and sort of attack you for food. They're not happy with acorns now. They want a bit of croissant. And that's, that's what I'm saying. They've changed. They've, they're changing over time. Just like that grub having a biscuit. Everything's trying different food out. You'll want a gatto soon. Everything's getting more intelligent. The goldfish memories got better. Chickens are more intelligent than people thought they were, apparently. <laughs> Everything is... Time, time makes you more intelligent. Well... No, they do. That's, that's a fact, isn't it? If, if you're knocking around longer, then you're learning more, cos more stuff's going on, and you soak it up. And that's what these insects are doing. They're okay. all learning. You know what I mean? No, no, no. I saw a cockroach playing Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> it was on the internet, right? And somebody had, had linked up a cockroach to uh, <laughs> some. I can't even bother explaining it, but but, uh, wow. but that's what I'm saying. Everything, everything's moving on. <sighs> yeah, but but Pac-Man was such an old hat game, man. It's like from the late eighties. Yeah, that's cockroach. Oh my god, get out with man. Hello, PlayStation Three. Yeah, hello. hello. Yesterday's cockroach. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying is, I do watch a lot of insects and stuff, and you never see them wasting time. They're always doing something, and ants carrying something somewhere. Sometimes I watch it and it goes somewhere and comes back again. You think, does it know what it's doing? But at least it's trying. <laughs> now, if there was a what big... is it doing though? What is that ant doing? Work. It's doing. It's building a house. Or what? What's the point? It's everything it does is pointless. How can you say that? It's pointless. I'll tell just... you what, if, if there was a bigger sort of being looking over the world and they went, right, let's look at the human race. And, well, they'd look at the ants first and they go, right, they've got their hands full. They're carrying big stuff. They try to save time by carrying stuff that's way too big for them, really. They could do that with, between three of them. But they don't. They're all grafting hard. Then they go, right, hit the human button. They hit the human button, they watch the humans. The amount of people who are just sat about doing now, Lily Allen in London at 2 a.m. So what? What are you doing? <laughs> I agree with you, but what are you doing? You see, the ant analogy, joking aside, uh, I think there you hit on the fact that life is about working for what you get. And I'm right behind that. I am right behind that. I think that's, uh, I, I, I think that's absolutely true. That's what I meant. What's dangerous is... <laughs> to a kettle to an ant. At the end of the day, right... <laughs> Yeah, but that's that's evil, isn't it? What? You know, I, I don't. I, I mean, you, you sometimes make out as if I'm an evil man. We had an ant problem mm. in the garden. Mm. Suzanne said we've got to get rid of these, mm. and I said, well, it's a bit out of order. They are outside. And yeah. She said, yeah, but this is getting a lot of them. She went and popped the kettle on. Mm. I said, I can't handle this. I went in. Right? <laughs> what? You didn't want to see the ants, bird? That's sweet. You know, they're there. Yeah, they might be causing a problem, but. I don't want to see this this mess. Now the thing is, she went out. She poured the hot water on it. I left it a few minutes. I went out. I had a cup of tea. I thought it's a waste of electrical. Kills me. <laughs> so I took my cup of tea out there, and I'm sat there, and then I just saw one come back from wherever it had been. One ant. He looked devastated <laughs> because. That, that had been away. As far as that was concerned, it had been out to get a leaf or whatever. Came back, <laughs> devastation. <laughs> and it's, it's not, uh, that, that's, that's the thing, it summed up death for me, that. The, the ants that are dead, they didn't know anything. Suddenly they were there, next minute, load of water, dead. 
is the people who are still living in life <coughs> that are the saddest, aren't they, after death? Yeah. And that summed it up. What do you think? That aunt would have been better off being there when it happened. How could you tell the aunt was... What do you think? So you saw it, I mean, they run around in circles anyway, don't they? But this was just kind of going, what's going on? And what did, it, did it slow down when it got nearer the nest? Did it drop the leaf and then you see it run the last few inches? <laughs> it just kind of got close and it was like it, a double take almost. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it got near the hole, and then it was like, and went, this can't be, because no one's around. And then it walked on, and I went, no, it is the hole. And it went back, and it, it just sort of stopped uh, for a minute. Oh. And that, that, for me, that's the sort of thoughts, things that you can look at as a human uh, yeah. and appreciate it and understand it yeah. and go, yeah, that's true, that is like life. Instead of, oh, am I awake? Am I asleep? Or what? No. Okay. But you might as well be asleep, because you're doing nothing else. <laughs> I was in the supermarket recently, um, <laughs> just uh, just walking past the condoms, yeah. and uh, you never know when you're going to run out of balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, uh, and I was weird because the, the condoms in the supermarket are contained in a kind of cage, in a plastic cage, so it makes it all the more embarrassing buying them. So I'm trying to open this thing, and, and this guy who works there, sort of with this middle-aged guy who works there, who's you, you, you have to. Um, Take that to the uh, checkout. So you can open it yourself. And uh, so I just left it. I thought, forget it. I'm not going to take this to the counter. Because you never did. It's like if you get served by a by a woman, it's sort of a bit embarrassing. Particularly if that's all you're buying. Because <laughs> <laughs> she knows what you're up to. Um, you're going to fill it up with water and throw it at students. And um, but anyway, the reason I mention this is because it reminded me of the conversation we've we've all enjoyed in the past, Rick, about when Carl bought. Uh, for his girlfriend for Christmas. Uh, was it a uh, two pack? A two pack of yeah. What was it? Condoms. What, wasn't it about? Oh my god! Buy one get one free. <laughs> yeah. So that was a couple of years ago, Carl. The famous uh, condom gate. Have you bucked your ideas up since then? I just think uh, that as time goes on, you don't sort of buy each other as many presents. As oh, so do. sorry. That was a bumper year, was it? That was. That was a hell of a. She went. Oh, I remember. When, I remember when you used to buy me stuff like condoms. It's gone downhill since then. Well, no, she, your didn't, presents. No, she was getting them. What I mean is, there's less. Of course, prizes. she didn't. That's what. That's what I mean. Though it was sort of interesting to, to when I gave them. So there you go. Open them. She was not expecting that. And as time goes on. No, she was probably expecting a piece of jewellery or a holiday in Paris. It's more difficult <laughs> yeah. what I mean, to surprise someone in it over, no, over no, no, time. No, 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 no. But the surprise thing is meant to always be a good surprise. Yeah, but don't if if you're if you always get something good, it's like the three wise men. What did they get the second year? The, the little baby Jesus. Do you know what I mean? Once he's had that gold, it's like oh, I've, I've, I've sort of made it hard work for myself. There, I've got to get I've got to get him something better than that now. So it's best to give him the myrrh. The next year, get him the gold. It's like how you you know like people make a big thing out of you know having it away for the first time. And they go, oh, I'm going to do that tonight. Not the way to do anything. You won't get anything done by planning. <laughs> that's, that's an amazing quote. That'll be up there with the Evan uh, and Churchill. You don't get anything done by planning. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, uh, he's only got to read it down for a whole fucking year. <laughs> <laughs> the diary. That, of course, signifies another reading from Carl's diary. Let's make the most of it. Let's enjoy uh, some of the wisdom. I also think it's the last time ever he will make uh, an entry in this diary because um, you're not going to keep another one, are you? Um, I don't know yet. I might just get a smaller one. But I found that since keeping a diary, I've gone out of my way to do more stuff. Well, you say that, but... Well, let's let's find out. Let's find out if that's true. (laughs) No, I have. I read a bit in the news about people being injured while trying to cut open avocados. It's a food that ain't worth injuring yourself for. If it's a hassle to get into, leave it to the experts. I have never bought one. I have also avoided coconuts and pineapples. <laughs> the amount of hassle to get into these things outweighs the joys they give. Yes. It's the same reason I never bought a pair of Dr. Martin boots. Too much hassle when it's time to take them off. Yeah, a lot of my mates used to wear them in like the 80s. You know, the, you can't just kick them off, can you? It's a big upheaval. You've got to them. Yeah, I mean, I, I, since I found shoes with Velcro on them, brilliant. 
<laughs> Why don't you get it sponsored? Because you could wear a Velcro toupee. Because that would be great if we could do that. If someone could invent a little hairpiece for Carl, Velcro's the little uh. bit of fluff he's got on the top of his head, his shiny orange-like head. Pop a little Velcro toupee on. I would love that. I would love to get him wearing a wig. Watched a programme about the tweets yeah, this morning. It was filmed 16 years ago. Yes, they yeah. are mental. They did everything together, including the backing up. Phone calls had to happen twice so they could both have the same chat, and they said the same stuff at the same time. Well weird. The bloke who I watched it with, I don't know who that is, just some homeless guys that you just invited into the no, flat. just someone I've been sort of working with. Do you know a mate of yours? He said he fantasised about having it away with a pair of twins. I don't see the point in this. If you're going to have two of something, I would prefer to have two different. Have two different <laughs> women. If I had two cars, I wouldn't have the same one twice. Same rule with women. <laughs> I don't even normally like buying the same pair of trainers twice in a row. Well, if you're going to have something new, make it make a change. Okay. Like that fella who was going out with a woman and then left her and went out with a twin sister. Not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> not worth it! It's not worth the upheaval, is it? Because it's exactly the same model. <laughs> My theory about reading old news is right. It's less bad when you know it's old. There was a story about a weatherman who was fired yesterday for having a nude picture of himself on the internet. But that happened two days ago. He's probably got another job by now. So old news isn't as shocking. Well, old news isn't news, though, is it? It's olds. <laughs> what are you doing? Just reading the olds? No, but what, what I mean is if, if someone... Stick the video on of uh, last week's news, I just want to catch up on the olds. Yeah, but, but then it's still news. If you, News is something that you don't know. Uh, if someone tells that's you That's everything to you. That's information, Carl, not news. Yeah. But, but news is information. No, the, what, key, the key with news is the word new. <laughs> no, 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 I don't think it is, is it? It's, 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 is. Just, it's just information, but they tell you at 10 o'clock at night. It's like, what information's gone on? Bong, the guard is another here's some information. Yeah, that you didn't know before, because you couldn't have, because it only happened today. <laughs> <laughs> but never mind that. I'll tell you in a couple of days. It doesn't matter as long as you get the same info. <laughs> yeah, we can't call it news, though, because it's misleading. We get it done. It's called old. Bong. Yeah, but listen to me theory. What I'm saying is, <laughs> is that if someone in your family, you know, I don't want to bring the tone down, but uh, someone dies in your family. Mm. Now, say if you're away on holiday and they don't call you because they don't want to ruin your holiday, mm. and you come home and they go, Uncle Frank's dead, and you go, oh, when did that happen? And they go, two weeks ago. Now, because everyone else has got over it, it's not as bad for you. Because part of bad news is the way everyone's walking around moping, going, oh, have you heard the news? Frank's dead. But because everyone's I'm got there. over it, time is a healer. That's what that's what I mean about old news. It's but better you, than new but, news. But, yeah, but according to you, the only news that really matters is stuff that affects you. So it doesn't <coughs> matter when you... Uh, there was an earthquake, when was it? Yesterday. Phew, that's all right then. Often the aftermath <laughs> is worse than the actual event. Two, you only care about things that actually happen to you. So the doctor goes, you've got a kidney stone. Oh, when did this happen? Uh, two weeks ago. Oh, that's all right then. Yes. <laughs> No, but the world uh, but you're is... Not, you're not upset about dead Uncle Frank just because other people are upset. You'd be upset uh, personally. Would it make any difference when you when they told you? Yeah, but it, it is everyone else's emotions that, that make it worse, I think. Knocking around people who are miserable. What about warnings? <laughs> what about when they do things like smog warnings or, you know, there may be a... I don't uh, like it on the news when they sort of say, news just in, I think, oh, what's this? You think, oh, what's going on? But it might be useful it might to be know important it. Information. No, it just makes you panic. What? Yeah, but but sometimes knowing stuff keeps you alive. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I don't know if I like it. It's, it's, sirens, you say. I don't like sirens, do I? I've said to you, I think it's a, a scary noise. Well, it's meant to be, so you get out of the way. No, no, it's not meant to be. It's it's a sign to get out of the way. I'd prefer it if it. Like I said. Fire! Can you just move out of the way? Can as long as we don't make a chicken noise. But as long as you know oh, that's, that's not chicken freak people out. No, but it sort of makes you smile. But you'd, you'd go, oh, let's get well, out of the you're way. cycling along and you hear what sounds like a giant chicken behind you. <laughs> and you smile because you know that even though someone is burning to death, <laughs> there's something clucking in my way. <laughs> that's probably a guy having a heart attack. <laughs> Going to my mum and dad's today. 
Got uh, there. <laughs> mum and dad, mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose man was a witch, just popped that in brackets. <laughs> <laughs> just popped that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose mum was a witch. <laughs> whose man was a witch? Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter because it probably won't happen until 2012 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her, though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's old. It doesn't. She knows she's going to die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out, put it into perspective for her. You will be dead when this happens. Don't be worrying about it. Went to bed around midnight. Susanna and I decided to sleep tops and tails because it made me get a bit more room. Me dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes just sawing off a bit of the mattress. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roll Dahl book. No, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, you think anything, you can sort of trim anything, can't you? And it normally works. Who but trims with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off, I don't know what, how long that is. But he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because a mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Well, you wouldn't get a fucking brain, you know. So we decide to sleep tops and tails. Yeah. It just gets strange. So strange. <laughs> Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the, with the cupboards on either side. So he sawed a mattress in half. Well, not in half. Can you imagine how much hard it must be to saw a mattress in half? What did he use? What, a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been, yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus. So what happens to the springs? Uh. They just spring out the side. <laughs> some, some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. So it's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. Unbelievable. Oh, man alive. It's like... <laughs> Does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> really? That's unbelievable. There are squats oh. with better bedding arrangements. Must be some hey, nice man, next yeah. door saw me and yeah. said, yeah. Hello, Clive. Yeah. <laughs> The old man down the road, yeah. the old woman next door whose mum's a witch, <laughs> Uncle Up who lives in a dinky. It's not a real place! It's like fucking Yarnia! It's a joke! <laughs> 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 So, uh, what's the big thing of this year? What's the big thing so far? And you'll go, oh, yeah, that was the year that... Uh, I haven't really been following what's going on because of other, other, like, personal Well, yeah, issues. what's the big... OK, what's the it's big my thing? my boiler. My boiler's playing up still. I'm sick of it. You what? <laughs> my boiler. Your boiler? The boiler. That eats the water up and stuff. So it doesn't. You know what I do in that situation? I'd instantly get a repairman out. Sort Done that. Out. Done that twice. It was 80 quid for him just to say, yeah, it looks like you need a new one. Why did you get a new one then? Out. Because you, then you wondered, are you meant to believe him or is he out to sort of... Well, he's the expert. On? Yeah, but is he? It's well, like you need to get a second opinion, aren't you? Like, so that was the first time then, so what was the second time? Who came out the second time? Same fella. And what did he say? Well, I thought you were going to get a second opinion. Yeah, yeah. and also, <laughs> and, and they just sent him again, because it... What well, called a different what company? Was the, what, was it, what was his second opinion? I he quit. <laughs> I undercharged you, it's 150. No, because they so they must look in the book and sort of go, oh, you know, Harry, Harry went round there or whatever. And uh, and they must think, well, he went there last time, so he knows the situation. Yeah. And got the same colour again. Well, well and you've got the same opinion, same, I assume. Same answer, yeah. yeah. So, so what's his advice? Um, he just said, you know, there, there are people out there who will touch it if you pay the right money. Well, OK, so you're going to get an expert in who does this thing and sorts it out, so... Well, no, I, I called up my dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, he knows he's someone who can sort, sort stuff out. And he said, uh, oh, one of your cousins is a, is a boiler man. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're coming around, but I've never met them. And it turns out that that person, because, like, the whole family, you know, I'm, I'm not into sort of keeping in touch with people. Sure. I haven't spoke to my brother for, like, I don't know, 12 years and <laughs> sister Damn. about 15 years and that. So... The idea of this cousin, who I've, I, I mean, I, he might as well not have said he's my cousin, because I'm not going to know him anyway. I mean, it might have been last fella, Harry. Might have been like, <laughs> so, so they're going to turn up, and now it turns out that because they haven't seen the rest of the family, they're going to, like, use this as a reunion. Oh. What, so they're, they're all, all going to come round? Whilst yeah. They're all coming round. Whilst he fixes the boiler? Yeah. And I ate it. I ate, I ate family things anyway. 
So they're going to come around and just look at you? Well, <laughs> yeah, apart from the one who's fixing it, he'll be fixing it and the others will just be sat around sort of going, so, how have you been? It's um, like, well, where do you start? <laughs> I haven't seen... I, I mean, seriously, I mean, they are strangers. <laughs> when they buzz, I, I could be letting anyone in. <laughs> Uh, and so <laughs> you're going to attend them all in your, in your flat? Well, you I, s- I said to my dad that I might just say that oh, I've got to go to a meeting, let them in, and then shoot off. And all it's going to do is dig up problems, innit? If my cousin was Einstein, very nice. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's going to add extra pressure. If your cousin was Einstein, then you really are an underachiever. <laughs> no, but do you know what? If he was, I'd know about it. I don't reckon you would know about it. I, I don't reckon your family would be that impressed uh, with Einstein. They would have stayed in touch. He was the weird one with the scruffy hair and his tongue out. <laughs> yeah. I remember our early ambition was to actually be educational as well as hopefully entertaining. And, and I feel perhaps at times we've perhaps slightly shortchanged listeners in terms of what they're learning. Well, they're not learning anything <laughs> because also. Um, even mm. as, uh, you know, compared to Carl, we, we are educated, mm. but we're guessing a lot of the stuff, and he flummoxes us, for, you know, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it was fun trying to be pompous and professorial enough just to, just to fight Carl's ignorance. I think we've learned more new words from Carl than we've learned anything else. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There's yeah. been a lot of made up <laughs> words, perhaps more than ever before. Mm. And also so some of the most yeah. abstract uh, conversations I think we've ever had. I mean, Carl's... Yeah. As he gets older, it becomes more and more he, um, arrogant and confident. He said a new one to me the other day. Um, there was a problem downloading, and uh, he said um, they've added to the fuckerage. <laughs> 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 Which is good. Yeah. No, uh, I reckon uh, the stuff we know is enough now, and all we tend to do mm. is uh, find problems. All the mystery is still in the world. The what mind a body problem. <laughs> what a mm. problem. Mm. How to save the world. Yeah, but we know, are we? We know it's dying. We know how to fix it. Um, Not yet, we don't. Turn your lights off. But then we didn't. You turn yours off. Just <laughs> <laughs> get sick of it. Leaflets through the door all the time. Turn your eating off. Turn the lights off. You're living like a mole. <laughs> <laughs> I love his little internal dialogues out loud. They're fantastic. The little discussions he has with himself. <laughs> oh. That's going to be amazing, us three. We're about 75, 18. <laughs> He's fucking moaning. Oh, we're in a similar to everybody but just the way he goes around thinking things is you know it's it's, very unique yeah yeah unique <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know anybody that thinks like Carl <laughs> well maybe uh, so it's a little bit of you know yeah. Theo Vaughn in there <laughs> you know what I'm saying off the wall shit <laughs> but I think yeah. Carl, yeah, I, I think Theo that. is playing is you know joking I'm more so, yeah I think Carl's 100% serious. <laughs> and the shit he says. Truly. Yeah, he's, man. He's authentic. He's 100% authentic. <laughs> That's who he is. He's not a character. Yeah. That's who that nigga is. It's a, like, Carl was a cameraman for Ricky, right? At one point in time. That's how they met, right? No, I he was the producer of the okay. radio show. Okay, producer. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, producer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah. What a way to meet somebody, man. You know what I'm saying? And start a relationship. Ricky done sent him overseas on trips. Yeah. Uh, Has on TV show, like two or three TV shows Carl had. <laughs> Damn. Right, man. 
Yeah, they need to get back. They need to, you know, start a podcast or do a show together again. It needs to happen. I don't think they've done anything for like the last ten really? years or something. Like that yeah, needs to. Yeah, I could do like a little revamp. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just a podcast. Just put do an hour podcast. I'd love to hear them back together. <laughs> All three of them. Yeah. Steve. Exactly. We know Ricky. He's doing stand up right now, so I haven't seen much from Steve. Yeah. Well, Last Steve on the, is on the show on Amazon. I oh, he is? The show okay. is called. Of course, he was in Hello Ladies a long time ago. Right, exactly. It's hilarious. Yeah, that was so Steve's on the new show on Amazon Prime. And then um, Carl's Me and Carl, uh, what you call it, has a new show, Willow. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. <laughs> what was his name? Damn. You're talking about the... Uh, uh, Oh, Warren, uh, Warren, Warren, yeah, Warren, Warren, Warren Davis. Warren, yeah, the midget, yeah, the, the little person. The little person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, midget, little yeah, person. But he's, he's, he's playing like a dwarf or something in this in Willow. He's like a creature. Oh, really? I'm not a creature, but he's like oh. a, uh, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. <laughs> he's like a wizard. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Little person wizard. In I'm Willow. check that out, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, show's, show's going to be bad. 